I was going to call it Chain Busters. Uh, uh, it's hard to come up with titles at times. When, when I was doing this, I could see uh, men's and women's hands chained up and suddenly being broken. And I realized there's things in the Scriptures that tells us about how to break the chains from off our lives uh, and how to do it. And I want to talk to you from Psalm 67 and verse 1. I'm going to read to verse 7 this morning. Uh, Psalm 67 and verse 1, chain busters. There's several things that the Bible tells us in the Bible that will break the chains from off human beings. And this is one. Psalm 67 and verse 1. David cried this. He says, God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon the earth and thy saving health among the nations. Let all the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations of the earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. Look at somebody say, he's going to bless us. Even our God shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. What a tremendous sound. God shall bless us. But he didn't just turn around and say, God's just going to do it. He put, a, he put a condition on it. He said there's things that you and I need to be doing in order to cause them, them blessings to come to us. And I, I want to talk about this this morning. There is a sound that creates an atmosphere it changes the atmosphere. It, there's a sound that changes the spiritual climate of a room or, a, or a, the atmosphere or a circumstance or a situation. There is a sound that attracts the Holy Spirit of God. There's a sound that alerts angels that they come to attention and begin to look to where that sound is coming from. There is a sound that rises far above whatever man put in the way or whatever circumstances stands. There is a, there's a sound that ascends right through the heavenlies where the war goes on and right up into the very throne of Almighty God. There is a sound. There is a sound that causes a response from heaven itself. There's a sound, and it's the sound of a worshiping people. It's the sound of worshiping humanity. It's the sound that can come from a single voice. And it doesn't matter if he's at an oasis, in a prison cell, in a submarine, on the top of a double-decker bus, on a skyscraper, or in the basement. When that one individual, when that voice rises from the depth of his being, and a voice of worship unto his God Almighty, it, tr it transcends, it ascends, and the heart of God hears it, the ear of God is turned to it, and heaven responds immediately. If we'll ever learn it, it will break the chains from off you. It will do certain things to you that will release you. I think even better than the individual uh, causing that sound to come forth, it's when born-again believers come together with one mind, one vision, one focus, and they've got this idea together. It's not about building a building. It's not about receiving an offering, but it's about coming together as one voice and our voice rising up towards Him who deserves all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. That sound. That sound will cause hell to stop dead in his tracks, but that sound will cause the ear of God to turn towards you. If we'll ever learn this, your prayer life will change because you'll never just go in with a heavenly Father, give me this, give me that, give me the other, thank you, thank you, thank you, good night, Irene. You will never do that again in your lifetime when you understand exactly what you're doing and your worship before God means more than anything else. God already knows your needs. God knows what it takes. He's already got the reins of your life. He's moving you as he's instructing you. It is that worship that comes from the inside of us. Even if you're panicking, even if you've got a whole worry going on in the inside, if you'll stop first of all and worship him for who he is. He is God. He is God and he is God alone. And if you will stop momentarily before you get to the asking and start to tell him who he is and worship him for who he is and what he is, your, your prayer life, your asking will change. Your faith will begin to rise to a new level. I'm telling you, your prayer life will change. But the chains that is attached to you will slowly but definitely 
they will begin to drop off you and your life will change. You can change the atmosphere in around you. You can change the way you think. Everything about you can be changed. But and honestly, it's not just a matter of, 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 of oh, let's do this because it almost sounds like it's a voluntarily thing. Now I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing voluntary about this. God demands it. He demands our worship. If we are believers, He demands our worship. You'll worship the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's the first commandment. And, and forget about all the other nine commandments, all the other hundreds of them that's in there. If you're not completing the first one, you're not even on the scorebook at this point. And many times we have set this aside and we have put entertainment in instead of worship. This is, the entertainment is there to help you worship. But if you won't do it, and all you got is a foot tap and song, and all you can say, you know what the greatest insult I believe to God? And many people, with the time is set aside when we're meant to be up there with our hands raised and worshiping, and instead many people do the religious thing and they sit down and read their Bible. Hey, read the Bible when, we've, when we get to the next part. This part is set aside for your vocal cords, for your mouth, for your breath to open and to worship Him with all your heart. A lot of times we don't get breakthroughs. And a lot of times we are halted, hindered, and we don't get the healings, we don't get the miracles, we don't see it. It's because we have not done the first principle. We have not stood to worship Him. We have not come into His courts with thanksgiving, and we have not taken time to thank Him for the last miracle, for the last breakthrough. The la hey, you're alive this morning. We should be just worshiping and thanking Him that He kept us alive. The enemy probably had you on his list last week and wanted to run over you with a steamroller. He wanted to push it. Tesco trolley over your foot and you're meant to be in, in hospital this week. But you're here and look at somebody saying you're looking good. That's the grace of God. That's the mercy of God. That some of us is, it's not at that stage. Some of us at the other stage where, where all heaven has been poured out upon you and you're walking in a harvest. Well, your, your prayer life now should not be on a gimme, gimme, gimme. Your prayer life should be on a thank you, thank you, thank you. So we need to get a hold of this and get it right on the inside. God demands that you and I worship Him. He, he, he demands. Why? Why does God demand this? Well, it's a real simple thing. Because it's the only thing in the whole universe that God can't do for Himself. God can't do it for Himself. God cannot worship Himself. Because to worship, it means you've got to find something higher than you. I can worship God because God's higher than me. I'm not God. God's higher than me. So I can worship God because I can bow to Him. He's higher. God cannot worship Himself because there is none higher than the Lord. Are you with me this morning? So He gives that into the hands of the humanity. So He sits on His throne and He waits upon that thanksgiving and He waits upon that worship. He cannot do it Himself. So we give it into your hands. So he waits on that sound resonating from the earth up towards him. He doesn't hear just the one individual. When it comes, it comes from all over the globe. And it comes as a sign that heaven recognizes. And every single one of us needs to enter in somewhere. You say, Joe, well, it's a private thing. I know, but there's a, cause there's a time when it's corporate. And there's a time when we, come, when we come together to make it do. But God orders it. God sets it because he demands it. He says, I can't do this for myself. You come before me and you do it. The enemy of our soul, it is what he demands. The, uh, the hell itself, that dirty devil from the beginning, he lost his place because he was trying to steal the worship from God. He's still trying to steal the worship from God. If he can't get you to out and out worship him, then he'll get you at least to stop you from worshiping God himself. He's out, to, he's a worship stealer. And if you're not worshiping, then he's, he's stealing from you. And if he's stealing from you, then he's preventing you. He is absolutely preventing you from getting most of the things that God has assigned to you. When you and I lift up our hands, and, 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 and well, maybe you don't believe in lifting up your hands. Let me cut it short then. If you and I lift up our voice, at least when you lift up your voice, whether you do it publicly or privately, but when you lift up your voice and, and you close your eyes and you lift your head towards heaven where God resides, and when you, you begin to say, God, I acknowledge that you are God and you are God alone. I acknowledge that you are King and you are El Supreme. There is no one like you. When you begin to do that, that is worship. That is letting all heaven know I'm on God's side and I'm so thankful. I'm appreciative of the fact that he saved me. His blood has washed me. I'm a thankful to that. And at the same time, that same voice that's going to heaven is heard in the, in the, the caverns of darkness. 
That same sign that goes directly to the throne of God is picked up by the ears of demonic sources. And it's simply telling them that you have no place in me anymore. Have you got a hold of that? It tells the enemy that he has no place in me. It tells him you have no authority over me. It tells him that yes, you cannot do things to me anymore for I'm no longer of your kingdom. I'm of the kingdom of God. And when you stand to worship, it's putting the heavenly citizen flag up and say I'm a citizen of heaven and this is going towards heaven and my heavenly father hears me. He hears you because he, he, is, he has the ear open to all his children and he listens and it's his mercy and it's his grace that he watches over us and blesses us. Because we really don't fulfill the principles at all. But if you learn this, this will break the chains from off you. This will create an atmosphere. And as you create that atmosphere, you'll know when it's created. When you more times you do it, you'll know when, the, when it's right. There's, there's a moment when it just changes and you know the atmosphere has changed because you've been singing in tongues or worshiping in tongues or just standing and giving God thanks for his creation. And as you do it, there's a moment you just know that, they, that it's almost like the curtain opened. It's almost like you know you have an audience with your father. And at that moment of time, you have access. You have access right into the throne of God. And as God hears... And I, I, I think I know there's times I go to and I ask for this and I ask for that. But I really believe if you do it right, you wouldn't even have to ask for it because God knows all things. And at that point, I bring when you have access to the Father, instead of having to ask, you get to hear. And he'll put ideas and suggestions and thoughts in your heart that when you're finished and you walked out of your room, you say, wow, I know what to do now. I'm going to phone him. I'm going to ask her. I'm going to talk this. I'm going to settle this. I'm going to, going to go up there and ask him. And all of a sudden, things begin to fall into place. And it comes because of that one avenue called worship. When we worship, there's a moment of access into the Father. And it's that moment when he pours out his goodness to us. I'm really believing next Saturday night, when we worship, when you worship together, we come together corporately, there'll be a moment it may not be on the first song. It may be on the ninth song. But I believe there's a moment when you will have access, when heaven will open and the voices will raise up. And I believe it's not, it's not what we say. It's what the Father does. And, and without even having prayer lines, people can get healed in their seats. Pe people can start suddenly crying. People can get all emotional. People can walk out and go back home and, and a husband hugs them that hasn't even been home for four, four years. Things happen. When you have access to the Father, and it comes through this, mo this, this simple operation of worshiping with all your heart. Worshiping. We learn to enter His gates with thanksgiving. That's a worshipful heart. Enter His gates. Come into His gates with thanksgiving. And, 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 and sit there in, in, in His courts with praise. See, we, we, have, we have learned, and we've been in that many circumstances where we had to have a quick prayer, and you've got to go in, and say, oh God, you've got to help me. That's one nasty piece of goods over here. And I'm going in there now. Oh, Lord, help me. Amen. And, and that's emergency prayers. But your life's not supposed to be an emergency prayer. Uh, uh, life's meant to be in this place where somewhere we take time just to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Not rushed, not hurried, but an offering before the Master. And I believe if you'll do it, this, I believe if you'll start, you're going to have to learn how to do it. But I really believe if you start, I believe there's breakthroughs. I believe there's, a, there's an entrance that you will make in. I believe you'll be astonished. And I believe before you ever see any change in you, other people will see the change in you. And they'll say, did you get your hair done? And you haven't. And is there, are you wearing a new tie? And you're not. But they'll see something different about you. They'll not be able to pinpoint it. But it's your heart that's changed. And the heart changes because of worship before the Father. That worship does it. And when David wrote this, and David said this, and he maybe sang it, but I believe it was a prayer of adoration, and, and it, was, it was a prayer going up, and he says, Oh God. He started off, and if you take that word, just a simple word, God. When I, when I almost in the Old Testament think of the word God, I always think of Jehovah. And Jehovah simply means a covenant making God. And that would be good enough because once you know you have a covenant that God and Jesus cut a covenant signed in the blood and under it is all the benefits and them benefits are belong to me, I can start claiming the benefits of God. I can do it because of the covenant. When you know Jehovah is a covenant keeping God, then there's something else, but that's not the word he used. He used another word which is called uh, Elohim, e Elohim, 
E-L-H-O-M, E-L-O-H-I-M, Elohim. Or maybe, maybe there's a different way of pronouncing that, uh, Elohim. I don't know, you, whatever way it comes out sounds good to me, but the Father knows what I'm trying to say. But the, the word is Elohim, or Elohim, and it simply means the supreme God. And when you realize it's not just Father, uh, and Father is unique to this generation, it's unique to this dispensation, that we can actually call God Father. We have that intimate relationship. But, but if you get that intimate relationship, you, it might just, in your mind's eye, diminish who He really is. And every now and then it's good just to put his full title on Elohim, because Elohim means supreme God. It simply means above all else. It simply means there's nothing or no one can equal with him or to him. It simply means that he cannot be matched. Now, when you start to use that word and start to think who I am now talking to, I know he's daddy, but I know that what he is right now. He is Elohim. He is El Supreme. He is the supreme ruler of the universe. There's none like him. There's none like unto him. There's none above him. He is it. He is, he is the almighty God. When you begin to call on him, you will understand this. The word supreme doesn't just mean supreme as in, in something gorgeous. It simply means supreme justice. Supreme justice. And the full title is supreme justice of the universe. It simply means this, that when God says something, there's no one or anybody can ever alter that decision that has been made. So if you go to daddy and get a decision made from heaven, it doesn't matter what your critic says, it doesn't matter what your great aunt says, it really doesn't matter what the government or the board says. When daddy, the El Supreme of the universe, has made a decision, it cannot be changed, it cannot turn, it is his decision. It also means because he's the supreme justice of the universe, when we would go to the courthouse, I'm not sure if they have it here, because we got a monster of a building down there, but I think if you go to the big cities where they have the things, they have the the, the, the lady who's up on top with holding the scales. And as the supreme justice of the universe simply means he's the one that holds the scales and balances the scales. The scales are kind of unjust for the believer because it always tilts on our side. Because whatever you can't come up with, the grace of God gets onto your scale. The mercy of God gets on your scale. The faith of God and the love of God gets on your side of the scale, which alters the balance in your direction. Look at somebody say, I'm going to win. And so when you're calling Elohim, enough if you call him Jehovah, because this is just another part of his name, but if you call him Jehovah, he's a, he's a contract-keeping God. We, that's brilliant. Hey, but there's one that tells me, it, in my mind it's almost above that. He's the supreme ruler of the universe. And what God says is final. Have you got that? So when you get it from God, when you've read it, it's been prophesied to you, when you've got the word from God, that's final. It doesn't matter what the enemy says, doesn't matter what circumstances says, it's done. And God says, justice will be done. Justice will be done. He wrote it in Romans chapter 12, verse 19. He said, dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. Don't worry your wee head about this. He said, don't be getting all confliverated over this, carry on. Don't, don't, don't be getting all uh, getting distracted because they said that. And they said, you know what he said? He says, vengeance is mine. I am the supreme judge of the universe. Nothing goes unnoticed by me, and nothing goes unrewarded. He said, I'll, I'll help you here. I'll, I'll give you justice. I will justify you. I, I will, I, I'm your avenger. I will avenge for you. I will see to it that this is done right. I will see that it. it might take a while. Justice does take a bit of time at times. But he says, he says listen, vengeance is mine. Not only is vengeance used where God turns a right wrong, but he also takes care of So if you've been doing something, God also rewards you. He is a rewarder because he's the only one that can do it. There is no competition with God. We're not, I'm not in competition about you, and you're not in competition with me. I don't have to sing louder than you. I don't have to worship more than you. We're not in competition. Absolutely not. Competition is where you're trying to get satisfaction because you've put somebody else down. This is not what this is all about. There's only one place where satisfaction comes, and that's when you've got this close, intimate relationship with Elohim. 
when you've got that closeness, that's because he is the true and the only source of happiness and satisfaction, deep satisfaction in your life. And when God says, I'm going to bless you, and if you read that scriptures, he'll find out he says, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. When you find out that he said, I want to bless you, it doesn't matter who makes any alternative decisions in your life. When you start to go before him in thanksgiving, you'll begin to see this in operation. And he cried and he says, oh God, have, be merciful. Merciful. The word mercy gives a demonstration where it's like a hand that reaches down towards you with a gift on the inside. And he's uh, simply asking God for mercy in whatever he's going through. And he sees a picture of God stooping down. Would you stoop down from your high place to me in my low place? And God says, I'll do it. And he reaches down with his hand to bless. He extends his hands of mercy. He extends it and blesses you. There is a blessing that can be released to the worshiper for those who learn how to do it. And he says this, and let you make your face shine upon us. We use that a lot in, in weddings when we come to the, to the wedding blessing at the end. And let your face shine upon us. And that word face shine upon us, it simply means to look upon us. It means if, if a king was there and you were coming for justice or whatever, when the king looked towards you, it would be your turn to come forward. When the king would look towards you or hand the scepter in your direction, it means now this is, you're, you're getting all the attention that's coming your way. And I believe that God's merciful to us. And I believe he'd turn his face towards us when you and I learn how to open the portals and open the way to God, open it to God through that form of worship and do it with all your heart. Look at somebody say, I'm going to be a worshiper. And David cried this then afterward, and, and he could have said, and God bless me, but he added this bit on it, it says, bless us, bless us. You'll find that worship changes people into blessers. Because if there's a heart that just wants me to bless, I need this now, and I need this, and I don't know what your prayer life's like, but if I want one of them, and I've got to have one of them, and talk to him to give me this, and your prayer life's all about you giving. There's something, that, there's, there's only one thing, we'll change it. It's when you go in with a heart of worship towards the Father. He does something on the inside of you. And before you know it, you're not just praying about God help me, but you're saying God help them. And it absolutely, it'll change. Worship will change you into a blesser. And you'll find that when, when Joshua was told to take the people into the promised land, you'll find that when he started to go, not everybody wanted to go. Not everybody would go in there. Twelve tribes, two and, a half, two and a half tribes, didn't even want to go in there. They were content where there was. A lot of people content where they are. A lot of people content. And Joyce came back to them, and, and they said, hey, we're fine where we are. We don't, we don't really want to go any further. We don't want to do any war. We're just, we're just okay just sitting here. Leave us alone. And, and, and in essence, it's like this when Joyce came back and talked to them and said, if you don't want to go any further, that can't make it. If you don't want to go any further, then you'll sit here. But I've found something about worship. Worship puts some go on the inside of you. Worship will put the seal back inside you. That when you start to worship God for who he is, the, the, the compassion of God comes on the inside of you. The, 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 the mercy of God starts to work on the inside of you. And before you know it, you want to go. You want to be there. You want to help them. You start praying for other people. In fact, you go to talk about yourself. You say, no, wait, I need to talk about this, Father. And you'll talk about other people. It'll change you. Worship first will change your whole prayer life. Worship will create a desire on the inside of you to go further. Absolutely. You can't. You can't get hungry. You can't make yourself feel hungry. I feel hungry all the time, I think. But you, you, can't, you can't make yourself hungry. But God can. And there's a hunger for God that you cannot help. You, can, you pray all day, it's not going to come. But if you worship, God will put a hunger on the inside of you. And you'll hunger for him. You'll hunger for his presence. You'll, you'll pursue him because it's awakened on the inside of you and it comes before worship. It, 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 that worship, you'll start then to feel for the lost. You'll start to go into the sick rooms in the hospital and you won't just see your own that's sitting there in a sick position, but you'll look at somebody else in another bed and, and your, your prayer life kind of changes for a minute. Oh God, is there not something can be done over there? It's that worship. It's that worship. It's that worship that does it. It's a chain buster. It'll break the limits right off your life and bring you to where you want to go. God has a greater purpose than you have. Your simple purpose is to learn how to get into his presence with worship. But God has a greater purpose and he wants the nations to worship him. 
He wants the whole nation to worship him. But he's got a plan in doing that. Because he wants you to worship. He wants you to find out, if I go in here, God will bless me. If I worship him, God will bless me. And as you begin to talk about your blessings to people, people will want to know, how'd you get that? How'd you do that? How, how come that's happening for you? That's what people want to know what. And then your testimony rises. You'll get to tell people how good the Lord is. You'll get to say, well, time was going nowhere but the Lord. You, out of your mouth, you'll hear yourself continue saying, the Lord did this, the Lord did that. You'll begin to tell people, hey, the Lord can do that for you. Your whole lifestyle becomes a worship. And the master begins to use you in a nation. He'd begin to put your voice through the nation. Look, if God has blessed you, if God has blessed you, it's meant to be celebrated. It's meant to be celebrated. When God blesses you, it's not just to keep it in a corner for me and mine to know about. That's meant to be celebrated that God has done an awesome thing. It's meant to be announced. We call that your testimony. But when something good happens to you, we're meant to announce it to our house, to our family, to the people we know. And if you get a greater audience, that's even better. If God heals you, it's meant to be celebrated and announced. If God heals you from cancer, there's a sick nation out there. And there's people right now would give anything to know, is there anybody ever got healed from cancer? Most people out there think if you've got cancer, you're dead on arrival. There's a lot of people out there in the house of God has been healed through, of cancers. And they need to rise up and sell. The whole church needs to celebrate that. And after it's celebrated, that needs to be announced. So that through this nation, people that's in that situation needs to know there is a way. They need to know there's hope. They need to know that God is on the business. God is doing something. And that testimony becomes a worship. For God says, I want to do this. I want the nations. Let all the people praise me so that he can glorify them. He can get glory out of it. God wants to do it. We're living in, in, in extreme, dangerous, dark times. And the nations are shaken. They're, they're perplexed. They don't know how they're going to get out of it. It's time for the church to rise up. And it's time to rise up with testimonies. For to have a testimony, we've got to have a breakthrough. We've got to have a breakthrough. There's got to be financial breakthroughs. There has to be breakthroughs in finances. There has to be breakthrough in, in, in relationships. There has to be breakthroughs in marriages. There just simply has to be because they are testimonies. And how we get them is, first of all, in our problem is to go before God and worship the, acts, the entrance happened. God turns around and he says, I will bless you in it. And when we start becoming blessed, then the nations will want to know, how did you get what you have got? And suddenly we got something moving. And then all you get is different people coming together, worshiping God, and God gets all the glory. We got a responsibility, folks. We got a responsibility to worship God. This, I, I really think this, coming to the point, this is not just a little nicety, and it's not a voluntarily thing. I think this is a demand from heaven. I think right now, if there's ever a time when God says, worship me, it's happening right now. And the Bible says, and we read that, that psalm together, that the Bible said that, uh, 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 let, in another psalm, it says, let, all, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So this is not just for one or two people. This is not for the Baptist and one for the Presbyterian and a different way to do it. This is, this is the collective body of Christ. The collective body of Christ worldwide coming together with different tongues and different voices. Hands raised or hands in your pocket, whatever way. But worship going up before the Master. And, and as that sound is raised, and as God responds to that, we have to break through. We have to break through. If we can break through and God responds... Suddenly things start to happen. The brightness comes. The daylight happens in the midst of darkness. I want to tell you, it's not just a matter of filling the church. It's a matter of getting the word out that God is still on the throne. He is El Supreme. He is the supreme ruler of the universe. He's taking care of us. He wants to bless us. When the blessings come and people will sit up and take notice. He said, let's rejoice and let's be glad. We need a happy church. Look at somebody say, smile. <laughs> There's nothing worse. You drive past churches going home. Well, if you're ever out on time with other orchards, some churches get out before us. But nevertheless, if, if you're going out and you're driving past the marble statues and the steps and they're coming down, they've got a face like thunder. You know what I'm saying? They're looking and there's not a happy one. They're gurning and they're, they're or else there's three of them, uh, heads together. And you know, rightly, somebody's just been 
talked about. You know what I'm saying? And, and you try and pass that, and the big sign will say, come and well worship with us, and you think, there's no way. There's no way I want to go there. But you get a people that's coming out, and they're smiling. You get a people that's coming out, and they're patting each other on the back, and they're getting in the car, and they're waving like they're way off to Toronto for a holiday. You know what I'm saying? And they're coming. When people's going to take notice, and just say, I wonder what's going on in there. And it doesn't matter if there's six people in the building. People want something. They want somewhere where there's a bit of joy. Not entertainment joy, but true joy and the happiness and, and something on the inside of a human being. People will want to talk to you when they hear a happiness. You could be going through a dilemma, but they'll still see a happiness on the inside of you. People want to see it. They want to know it. If we serve God and God's on our side, we should be the happiest bunch of people on the face of planet Earth. We should at least have a smile at least for one time during the day. Even if it's when you see a bacon sandwich and you go, oh, there should be. Look, I'm not criticizing people that's gone through dilemmas and troubles. I understand that. I, I've been there myself. But you know, you're not going to sit and, and smile from ear to ear when your child's sick in hospital. But you go up there, at least it should be courtesy. At least to be a little positive on the inside when somebody comes beside you and be able to step up and do something that comes from worship. It can't come any other way. Worship cuts out theology. Worship cuts out religion. Worship just sets it all to one side. It doesn't matter what size of Bible you carry. It's what size of heart you have towards worship, towards the Master. And that cuts down all walls of denominations. I've preached in all denominations, and I'm not here to read up denominations. Whatever, wherever a person chooses to sit on a Sunday or whatever day you worship, that's your choice. But what's your heart saying? Is your heart open to the master? Is you, do you drive along on your own and you just, you just fill your heart with worship? Do you, do you talk about nothing else? You're, I mean, sometimes I drive that to Cork. That's a long drive, and periodically I do it on my own. And sometimes I'm glad to do it on my own. There's honest to goodness. Sometimes I maybe drive to Ness or whatever the rest, and I'm thinking maybe I'll call him, because. and sometimes I think, no, I won't. And just for that two hours, sometimes that four and a half hours, I think that's, that's, that's what I need here. And there's nobody in that car but hello on the left-hand side and Joe in the driver's seat. And I'll talk to him and I'll worship him. And I won't ask for a simple thing. I'll just tell him he's, he's awesome. I'll tell him he's wonderful. And sometimes I'm driving down that road and if he can see me, I'll be sitting with tears running down my face because I know who's in the car with me. And he said, now there's a period when, when, it, when it opens, you just know it's open. And you say, I need to talk to you now. I need to talk to you now. And you can pour out your heart. And the door closes and you come back to worship again. And you back out of his presence worshiping. You back out of it worshiping. You enter in worshiping and you back out worshiping. It will change you. It will change your situation. If, and you know, God doesn't force people to change. But he creates circumstances for change. And some of them dilemmas you're facing right now are brick walls. And nothing's going to break it down except you learn how to get right in the presence of God and worship. I, I can't do it. We could collectively come together. The Bible says sing for joy. And, 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 and we, could, we could do that. And, and that's the reason we have worship. Is so it's collectively from this church we put a sign up towards heaven. And, and so I'm not looking for fancy songs. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted in the, in the, in the, the guys here, the, the girls. Uh, they practice and they always look for new songs and stuff. And, and, I, and I know they, because I know their heart, they're not just looking for a new song. They're looking for a song that works. They're looking for a song that has an, an attractive sound to it to reach up towards heaven. And, and, and so my job is not to just listen. Are they all playing in key? No, my, 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 I listen and, and, and think, is, is, the, is the access open yet? Because somewhere in our songs, the heavens will open and we'll have an entrance. Amen. And when we have an entrance, hearts will be touched. It really doesn't matter if I preach a good message or not. It matters, did the Holy Spirit turn up in the service? Amen. And he can turn up, and it happens during the worship. If we open our hearts, if we will do it, if we will do it, God will arrange it, and God will set it. I, I, this is not just for a corporate body. I know next Saturday, Saturday night we're doing that, but this is not about the corporate body. There's something we need to work on. But in your individual lives, if you will this week, let's take it for homework, if you will this week set aside a time and not to go in with a list of needs,
but to go into worship. And you may say, I don't know what to do. After I've said, thank you, Jesus, three times, what am I going to do? Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. Say, I've never done this before, and I don't really a dry blank wall, but would you help me? Would you help me do this? And do it. Set a time aside. Now, I'm not saying to go in there for six hours, but you could sit and watch Carnation Street for 30 minutes. So if you can sit for 30 minutes, you can sit for 30 minutes in, 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 the, in, in the presence of God. Get yourself alone. Don't bring your mobile phone. Make sure all the cattles are switched off before you go. So as soon as you'll sit down there, why don't I leave the cattle on? So, so, so do all you have to things to do. Pull the blinds and just you in there. Take your Bible in there with you. And just come in and say, Holy Spirit, help me now. Help me now. And said, I've said, I've come to worship the Master. I don't know how to do this. Will you help me? I just get in and worship him for who he is. Worship him for what he's done. Have you do it? For the first time you do it, that's over in 10 minutes. You can't think of anything else. Hey, you've done it. Walk out. But you go back in the next time, you say, God, I need to say more than that. And let it do it. If, if you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues, just talk in tongues. Talk in tongues. If it, if it assists you, put a little music on in the background just to assist you. But worship him. Worship him. Sometimes I'd stand in the back kitchen and guys, because I've just moved house, so it's not the same now. But when I used to look out the window, there was the mountains of Morn in the background, and there's these big chestnut trees. And there was a fence, and the squirrel used to run across the back and stop and drive my dogs nuts. It knew the dogs were paying and couldn't get up till it, so it used to sit and flick the tail at the dogs, the dogs would go berserk. But I used to just to sit and watch a wonderful world right outside my window. And sometimes I'd stand there, I'd just fill in the kettle and make breakfast or whatever, and I'd, just, I'd stand there for a minute or two and say, thank you, Father. I've got breath in my body this morning. I'm not lined up for a hospital appointment. My heart seems to be beating at the right time. I've got eyes to see your splendor and your wonder. And this morning, Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you that I'm alive at such a time as this, to see your awesomeness. And you know something, when you start to talk like that, I'm not a poet, but it's just my heart was filled with wonder. And my heart was filled with awesomeness of who he was. You know what you began to find? You began to find your heart warmed, and your heart got touched. And you'd almost have to put you, dry a tear and get back to making breakfast again. But there's just that moment. And I learned, I used to just wipe my eyes and walk away again. Then I realized, wait a minute, Stop wiping your eyes. There's an entrance. There's an entrance. The Spirit of God has just walked in here. And I realized, don't walk away. Try your eyes if you must, but hang about for a minute or two. God's either going to say something, or you've got a direct entrance to the throne now. Direct entrance. So, and then I'd say, Father, I just said, thank you. This is going to be a good day now. We've got business to attend, the phone calls to make. Help me this morning. I just said, now I learned, I learned how to develop that as it went on, but it started with simply my heart overwhelmed with the goodness of God. The enemy will try to steal that by saying, huh, where was he yesterday? Huh, look what they said to you. Listen, shut that off in a second of time. This is, and somebody just say, devil, this has nothing to do with you. This is me and daddy. And worship, worship, worship. If you will do that, if you will do that, your life will change. Your way you conduct your affairs will change. And heaven will begin to respond quickly, right quickly, in that one moment of time. I'm giving you a key this morning on how to do it. We're going to pick this up and deal with this tonight again. But I'm telling you right now a key. A key of development. A key of access. And I can't open it for you. I cannot open it for you. Only you hold the, it's like God, Daddy gives you the personal key to the front door and says, just use it and come on in, son. If you don't use it, you're never coming in. You'll hear other people talk about it and you'll read about it, but you'll never know what it's like just to have turned the key for a moment, walked in there and stood in the presence of God. It's there for us all. Let all the people praise thee. There's none excluded. Well, Joe, I'm a brethren. None excluded. Well, Joe, I'm a Baptist. None excluded. None excuse. If you're a human being and alive, you have access. I'm telling you how to get there now. I'm just simply telling you this morning how to get there. Let's everybody stand. Now, Father, this morning, periodically you have things to say to us that's necessary. 
You're not warning us of some crisis that looms ahead. You're not trying to tell us of a shaking that's going on in the nations. You're not, you're not telling us this morning. You're reaching out that hand of mercy and you're backing on us into your presence. And you've said, you got the key now. Come on in. I'm on the other side of the door and I'm not opening the door for you. You've got to open it. You'll open it with worship. But if you'll open it, you'll stand with me. And beautiful things will happen. And the deadness on the inside of you will come alive. And the heartache that you'll carry, you can leave it with him and walk away and forget about it. God, God wants to do the most amazing things. These things only happen. They don't happen because church is church. They happen because you get the presence. And it's that one moment of time when heaven opens to you. Holy Spirit, would you open to us this morning? Open to us this morning. There's people in need in this building. There's people that's weary and they're tired. There's people that's struggling. There's people that they don't know how to make things happen. But you do. There's people that's been wronged. There's people that's been let down, misunderstood, misconstrued. There's people mocked and laughed at. And they, 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 they're as white as the driven snow, but they don't know how to cope with what's going on. God, this morning. God, this morning. Let there be an access. Let there just be a moment, an access right into your presence. Now we'll do it privately and we'll worship you for access. But I'll be speaking this morning in this building. Open it this morning to us. That God, something will happen that couldn't have happened outside of this moment of time. See, that's what I'm saying. And let me break off from this prayer minute to say this. CDs, listen to CDs as class is good. You get some really good knowledge. The DVD is great. But you can't capture the moment on DVD. You can't capture that one moment on CD when heaven opens to you. It's not capturable, it's not recordable. You've got to be there when it happens. It's about to happen. God will touch and heal and make new this morning. It's not about personalities. God's real jealous over his name and he won't give priority to somebody else. We all want names because we know him, we're sat beside him, we think we're somebody. I sit beside the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords every day of my life. I get happy over that. This morning, we're taking this moment of time. We're kind of early. And let me take about 10 minutes. And I've learned the presence of God, the Spirit of God. He opens, he opens for a moment, and you've got to do it real quick. And then it closes. He's gone. And that, that door never stays open. I wish it did, but it doesn't. It's just momentarily. And it's open. And we've got to take this moment right now. Right now. Whoever you are, whatever you're going through. You know me. I probably won't even ask you what it is. Because I'm not your healer, but God is. And there's not that many of us here this morning, so it doesn't take long to get through this. But whatever you're struggling with, come on up the front. Let me pray with you. Step up right now. Maybe God done something last week and he wants just to complete it this week. I don't know where you are, but this is an awesome moment. This is a good time. God's doing awesome things, mighty things. You're, listen, you're further through the struggles than you can imagine. The enemy was after you big time. The enemy asked for you by name, strategically said, I'll have you. He surrounded you. He put you in a box almost that you could not break out of. You have no way with your intellect. You could not uh, uh, get out of where God, where you were going. But there's a thing called the grace of God and the mercy of God. And he removed the lid. The enemy was putting the lid on. You were that close of sinking. And the enemy was putting the lid down. And God snapped the lid out. And God rescued you from a package. And you're standing looking as good as you are this morning simply because God rescued you. You would never know it till you get to heaven and then he'll show you all these wonderful things. He's trying to let you know he's on your side. He's doing things for you. You have a life. You're on a journey. God will not let you down. You're not going to have a life of frustration and brick walls. No, no. God, give me your hand. God's trying to show you something. He can, he can, break, he can break though every wall down on your behalf. If you just learn how to worship it in your simple manner, you just learn how to get in there and thank him and praise him every morning. And before you go to sleep, I just thank him for taking care of you. Life will open. Things will happen. This is your season. This is your time in Jesus' name. Where am I? Let me through there real quick. I'm, listen, take a time to worship him. For It doesn't matter the hard stuff. You can forget the hard stuff. It's like a woman having a baby. Laura's up. Whenever I tell Laura I've got cramps or I've got something, she'll say, you know nothing about pain. She says, have you ever had a baby? You'll know. I said, I'm not liable to have a baby. I said, I'm sure it's tough and rough. But nevertheless... But I always imagine this women that has, has babies and then they tell me about the pain. 
But if they tell me about the pain, how come they go back and the next time and the next time? And she said to me one time, it's like this. She says like this. She says, the joy of holding the little one, it so exceeds the pain you went through that it almost cleanses the pain away. You've been through some tough times, hot times, rough times. You'll never have to go through it again, I need to tell you. That's a one-off shot. The enemy pulled his best move and it didn't work. The enemy pulled his best. You just need to take uh, your prayer life for the next week or next month and don't even ask him for anymore. God, if God can do that, he can do anything. Forget about asking. Just take a month to celebrate. Just take a month to celebrate. Every time you go to that prayer line, start off with saying, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Just, you'll know how to say it yourself. But if you do that, it will put you, in another, it'll put you in another level. It'll put you on another plane. You will understand exactly what access is. And you'll, you will find it real quick just in thanking Him and your worship. As you get to that place, you'll suddenly find, I believe it's open now. And then you can ask Him. He's teaching you a whole new key. I believe, God, you're going to speak. I believe you're going to speak to businessmen. I believe God will give you an entrance and an ear to businessmen across this nation and in other nations. The doors will open. Maybe it's like a full gospel businessman scenario, but I believe it's not just that. I believe it's full-blown business people meeting for a luncheon, for a breakfast or dinner, and you get an opportunity to say them. And I believe I see you bringing many business people into the kingdom of God. God has blessed you, sir, and God has blessed you, and your blessing will become a tremendous, a voice that will rise through the nation. He's using you. Get ready for more. Get ready for more in Jesus' name. And we're ready. There's a moment of time. Can I tell the people here? To mm -hmm. people? Yeah. Uh, we need to pray pray for this young lady, her daddy. She told me this morning outside the door that her daddy's, as we say here, just waiting on. And, and he, you know, maybe he only has the day. Maybe he only has hours. We don't know that. Nobody knows that. But according to doctor's report, he, he doesn't have a lot of time left. But, uh, and, and the man is, uh, as far as we know, uh, nobody ever knows, but as far as we know, the man yet has not uh, received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. She has talked to him. Her family's talked to him. And at this point, it's what we believe there's a hardness that's stopping this and 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 uh, you're probably up for this this morning i, I like the church and now different ministers has went in or at least one has went in and i and i said to them well has anybody just been direct and straight and she said yes there was a, a pastor was in yesterday and he was direct and straight but at this point the man still has not uh uh, uh totally surrendered his life i like could we pray would you take that on your heart over the next days, especially for this young lady? It's, it's a nightmare of their passing away is bad enough, but just knowing everything's hanging on the balance. And we, so we're not, here to, we're not here to judge the man. We just need the grace of God here. We need God to extend just for a moment of time, just, just a moment of time. If, he, if that man could whatever see, whatever, who knows, and just, just bow the knee. He just bowed the knee. I've been there in the hospital that many times and saw people and people that were atheists, people that were New Agers, people that fought and they worshipped the clouds that went past the sun. But you see, when they're in the last minutes, I, I watched them weep and ask Jesus Christ as Lord. So we're just believing. We're believing this morning. I forgot that you're a part of the family. It's your, is it your, is it your, your, your granda? It's your granda. Let's just join hands. Father, Father, now here, here's a family distraught. We understand there's a cycle of life and, and, and somebody's passed away. We understand it. But it's the uncertainty of eternity. That's, that's a whole different thing altogether. We cannot let this rest this morning. If there's access to the throne, which we believe we have, then, Father, I know you don't force people, and it wouldn't be right because you would force every human being because it's your will that none perish. But there has to be a way that we don't know. There's a moment, maybe you could give him a dream. Maybe in his uh, uh, almost comatized to his state, maybe there's something he can see. Maybe a relative. Maybe, maybe there's somebody who would go in, not with the harshness, but with the softness. I, I don't know. But God, we refuse to let that man go without making his peace with God this morning. This morning. Let some way, somehow, we demand that that man bow his knee. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bind every negative, hindering spirit in the name of Jesus. We bind every spirit that's blinding that man. According to the according to Corinthians, is they're blinded for a moment. We come, we we take authority and we bind that spirit that's blinding him from the glorious light of the gospel. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, is bound right now, so that in a second he can see the errors of his way. He can see that he's a sinner, and he will bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. We ref, Father, we refuse to let him go. We will not, we, we rebuke the spirit of death. 
we commanded to get his hands off that man. He will not die until he has made his peace. In Jesus' name, this day, do something. Do something. We believe it. We believe it now for this family in Jesus' name. I believe the very peace of God to overwhelm you in the midst of this. That as you surrender to God just afresh, that, that your heart will be whole and healed and tears will flow. We understand that. But we're just going to believe that there'll be such a peace in the inside. And you'll look at your daddy's eyes and you'll just know that there's a, you'll just know. You will just, I believe God will give you the thumbs up and let you know personally that he has made that, he made that peace with him. And I thank you this morning, Father, for this family, for this, for the heart. I thank you for, 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 for the, the whole family. God, we uplift them at this moment of heartache. But are we going to believe, Father, that it'll be surpassed in this, this knowledge that, that he's come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I thank you for salvation this morning. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for peace. Give, the, give her a peace, deep, deep peace in her heart this morning so she will know, know all is well. All is well in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Many trials surround us. Many in, uh, uh, insurmountable odds and, and limitations. And, and it seems to be just when you get one breakthrough, here's another brick wall. And the last one that came through, but here's another one. It's just the enemy at work. He's trying to put hurdle after fence after hurdle. He's just trying to do it. Don't be weary in your well-doing. Don't sit down in the middle of the race. You're in a race now. Don't sit down in the middle of it. You just keep plodding on. You just keep plying on. You're a worshiper. You're a worshiper. It doesn't matter if you forgot the whole ins and outs and the theology of it. Forget about that. Just get back to Paul worshiping Elohim. Just get back to that this day, somehow, somewhere. In the midst of that, you'll break. In the midst of that, your heart will open. In the midst of that, a hunger will come. In the midst of that, you'll have access. In the midst of that, listen, you just get it with you first of all. If you get the access, before you know it, the family has access. Before you know it, those surrounding you will have it. It's God handing you a key. And said, there's the key of the door, son. Come on, 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 on in. He's going to show you. This is a changing season for you. It's a changing season. This is not be one to look over your shoulder. This will not the time to look back at who you were or where you were. This is a time to look straight ahead and understand the glory of God stands right ahead of you. This is your moment. This is your time. I thank you, Father, for access. And I thank you for entrance into your kingdom and into your glory. In Jesus' name. Are you ready? Now, Father, I just thank you this morning that through that intercession that you've called her to do, I called her to, she'll open the, open the heavenlies. She'll open Mechwayas where there was no way. And it's not that, the, it's not that they do it for people because we can't, but you'll make it possible. You'll make it possible for people. The hindrances is out there. The things that's over nations will suddenly be removed just for a second so that a nation can glimpse and see the Lord. You're in a strategic place and God has you there. Don't falter and don't hold back. Whatever he says unto you, do it in Jesus' name. Excuse me, excuse me while I'll be back just 30 seconds if I have to do this. But you've got to go to where you're laid to go. Excuse me while I'm just coming back to this. Uh, uh, there, there is a commission on your life. God does not remove commissions. He removes people. When the day is over, he takes you home. But he doesn't remove a commission. A commission is a, is a, a lifelong thing. Sometimes he adds to it. Sometimes he says, well, okay, we can take it easy right now because we're at that place. We're not at that place to take it easy. There is leaders. There is leaders. Leadership. Leaders, leaders can get caught up in the program. They can get caught up in copying him and copying that. And every now and then, God raises up a Moses. In the midst, in the midst of all the crowd, he made, one's higher than the other, he raises them just to say, put your brakes on. Just to say, hold on, have we forgot who we were? Have we forgot how we got here? Have we forgot why we're in this place? He just raises a voice every, every now and then that, do, that doesn't look for the accolades of men, that, that has reached the achievements who doesn't need the applaud anymore. And, and they don't have to have a, a tickle your ear sermon. They just have to have an entrance key. And God's given you an entrance key. He gave it to you many years ago. He's just polishing it up for you and saying it still works, son. But the younger ones don't know how to put the key in. God says you're still commissioned. Show them how to do it. You get the portals opened again. You get that access going. This, th th this nation is waiting on leaders coming forward. You're a father in the kingdom. Get the key back in the door. Get the key back in the door. There's many, many people that's on their knees. They're weeping and they're broken. And, and they were in a, a, a tremendous place, but the enemy walked on them and people abused them. People didn't know how to handle what they're doing. So they, they blamed the one up front all the time. And so they're broken. And there's many of them, many of them went into insurance. 
Many of them them give up and sold shoes instead of doing what they're supposed to do. Your heart will melt. In the midst of worship and access, your heart will melt for those that you met years ago. You say, I've got to meet them again. I've got to meet them. And maybe you'll just be in a cafe and they'll walk in and you'll be the same. You'll say, it's not over. You can't go back to where you were, but let me just let you know you have a key. I say, listen, girl, they'll never get back unless their heart's healed. And you'll bring healing everywhere you go. You will heal the brokenhearted. This is God's people you'll deal with. Forget about the unsaved. There's somebody else will deal with them. This is God's people. This is the wounded warriors in the house of God. And there's a commission on your life. You don't have to find them. God knows where they are. He'll put you in their direction. Be real quick to pray for them anywhere, everywhere. And shed them tears over them if you have to. And God will do the rest. He's not finished with you. Are you ready? God's given you access into many people's hearts. Many people's hearts. He's given you an entrance now. You can't waste a moment. You can't think, oh, I couldn't, I'd never do this. God is about to open more doors and more doors and more doors that will take up a lot of your time and there's things that you want to do you won't be able to do anymore. But God has this nation in his heart and he'll send you to the weirdest places. He'll send you to places, what do I need to go there for? You left to stand in places where if people heard you stand there, they'd say, what's he doing over there? But forget about people. God's on, God's on track. He knows who he needs to reach and how he needs to reach him. Just be on top when he needs you in Jesus' name. Amen. So sorry for keeping you waiting. Nearly there. Nearly there. Coming, coming. There's a man coming your way. Hello. Are you ready? The access. God made this in such a unique manner. If he made it that you had to just come together once on Sunday to get it, then, then it would have been a waste of time because people wouldn't have come. He did it that we could come no matter where you are. You could be in the front seat of your forward. You could be in the back seat of the Vauxhall. Doesn't matter where you are, you have access and you have entrance. We can come in with tears. We can come in with joy. It doesn't really matter as long as it starts with your heart. Your heart gives you access to the kingdom. Are you with me? And even when the enemy, the enemy will try to break your heart, he'll squeeze the life out of your heart. Don't let the heart of worship stop. If you'll worship, if you'll worship, even if you're crying and worshiping, God will do the rest. God will do the rest. I, I, it's like God's doing a spring clean on, on the inside of you. It's, it's like you drive through a muddy, a muddy field uh, in your brand new car and you can hardly see it to the windscreen because it's all muddied and your windscreen's muddied. And God's taking the chamois and rubbing it clean. When you leave this building this morning, that that's hung on to you won't hang to you anymore. God's doing a refreshing in your soul. You're absolutely needed. You're necessary. And God's beckoning you into his presence this day. If you just take a 10 minutes, go light up on top of your bed or lock yourself in a cupboard somewhere and just worship him. Nothing else but worship him. You will find health and healing bring forth speedily. You'll find that there's things with said and there's words of said that clings and runs around on the inside of you like a long playing record. But God will stop the long playing record this morning right in the midst of the worship. He set this up for you. God loves you and he's beckoning you. You have a key this morning. I thank you for health. I thank you for restoration. I thank you for healing this morning. Way deep, deep on the inside. Do it this morning. I pray my father in Jesus' name. Could you give her a hug here this morning? Could you give her a hug? Ha, there's the man. He's been through the mill this week. This boy was over at the hospital and all types of stuff. And look at him smiling. I like your shirt, like your tie. You're beginning to look like me. Can't hardly believe that. Now, Father, I just thank you for this one. I think he knows what's pain. All the age of him, he knows what pain's like now. But he knows what it's like for it just to be delivered and set free from it in an instant. You're going to teach him many, many things in his lifetime. So I just thank you that you'll teach him to worship in his way. What are you? You're 10 now, aren't you? Ten-year-olds don't worship like 60-year-olds. They do it different. But nevertheless, God will teach you, just, just in, your, in your worship time, your prayer time, how to tell him who he is and thank you for what you are. And just, just tell him how, God, how great he is. And God will teach you to worship. And in your worship, you'll find that's when the rewards come. That's when God, after they worship, then God says, then they'll begin to reap the harvest. God's teaching you many things in all the age of you. But then you have many things to teach others as you go along this life. I thank you for total healing this morning and health that's restored to him in Jesus' name. Teach the people how to walk in access. Teach the people how to get into the entrance of Almighty God. Teach them. Teach them in Jesus' name. Are we all right? Father, I just pray that you'll give, give her an ear of the Spirit of God to hear. To, to realize and to know if that song works and that doesn't work. And not worrying about what people's thinking about the chords or not. But suddenly realizing, hey, we have access. Let me hang here for a while. I believe God will teach you. He'll teach you that moment when the entrance happens 
And I believe that you'll see many things and you'll know many things and you'll pursue it and, and you'll change this and you'll change that till you find it. And when you find it, you'll stay there until it's done. Now, Father, I thank you that the, for next week and for the anointing and for the wisdom and how to set this all up. I just thank you for the things we'll hear and the, the, the encounters you'll have in Jesus' name. Where there's that needle, fella? Come here, here. Let me pray for you. I'll come down to you. Father, I thank you for total health and healing. And, and when you make your journeys, and if you have to make that journey, I never asked you if you're going or not. But if you have a journey to make, and even just with the people that you make from different nations, I believe God will give you an insight uh, through their cultures and through their traditions. I believe that, that, that just as you learn how to enter into that moment of God, it, it doesn't last forever, it just lasts for a moment. But as you enter into that moment and your heart melts before Him, suddenly you'll have ideas and thoughts and you'll be able to transmit that to people of different nationalities and different tongues that will transcend the borders that men put up and you'll say things and they'll not understand why they want you or why they like you, but they'll know we've got to have Neil here to sign that contract. I just believe God will give you an entrance and enter but you'll always remember it came because I've got an access to heaven. God's going to teach you many things. I know healing has started and it will finish and be completed and you will have victory over the enemy on every side and everywhere you put your, you put your foot that the enemy will tremble because of the things you know and the nations you stand on. The enemy will tremble. God says, I have assigned you, assignment on your life. I will send you. Times I'll keep you, but there are many times I'll send you. And when you go, it's not just to make, make millions and contracts and charities, but it is there to win the hearts of men and to touch the lives of humanity. God says, you are mine. You are mine in Jesus' name. Amen. Did I get everybody? All right, we've got to go. We've got to go. We, I intend to stay on the same track tonight. Uh, uh, chain busters, I want to stay on that tonight unless the Lord wills to change it. I intend to hang on this one tonight. God bless you uh, 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 in, in your journeys and your travels. Just pray for this family. Keep them up in your prayers, will you? For just during this week, and we'll try and update you when we can. Just pray. For, give me you. Are you, are, you are, are you brothers and sisters? All right, come here. Stand to your feet. I, I don't want to embarrass you, but, but you're a part of that family. So we're after you. Now, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the commission that's on his life. You're smart, boy. You're absolute. You're a thinker. You're a strategist. In fact, you would think it through before you start to talk about it. You're that way. Some people wouldn't call you shy, but you're not. You're a thinker. You're a strategist. You're smart. You're intelligent. You can figure things out real quick. There's a commission on your life. God has an assignment on your life that's going to take you to different nations in your lifetime to meet with many different dignitaries and people. I see you going into, into uh, uh, garden parties and things where there'll be heads of state will be there. And God will give you an entrance into their children, into their sons and daughters. You can't talk to them because other people's assigned. That's not your assignment, but your assignment will be their families. And you'll get to sit in houses with other people behind closed doors, where houses that other people have gone to you because you got through to their family. But I see you rescuing families and bringing whole families into the kingdom of God because God's after the big shot, but he'll only get them through the family. There's an assignment and a commission on your life. It'll cause you many tears. It'll cause you many tears. But the burden will cause you to go higher than most people. And your expectation of what your heavenly father can do will be extraordinary. And there's a day they'll write books about the travels that you were on. You get ready for the ride of your lifetime. God's calling you. You'll do it in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray over him too for as he walks through this now with granddaddy. I pray he will see God in action at this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we've got to go. We praise him. We've got to go. I'm lovely to get back into more prophecy and not get out from the feast and chips. We'll be ready. Now, Father.